Okay, we've caught up with you one here from Arrowhead to talk about a game that is coming out on a bunch of platforms, a bunch of PlayStation platforms, not too long from now. I don't know if there's any any firm date or anything like that, but it, we're going to talk about Helldivers. First of all, uh, what has been the latest development in Helldivers? What, what's the latest news you can tell us about it? So the latest news, the absolutely freshest and latest news is I went to Germany and the team had to deliver the beta. I just skipped that. <laughs> they, they can do that on their own. Uh, but that's basically it. We're in beta now, finally. Mm. Which means that the game is just, we're just fixing all the bugs and eventually we're going to release it. And it's, it's feeling great. Is there any way to get in on that beta or are you just restricting it to yourself at the moment? Or? Yeah, it's an internal beta. Mm. So it's not going to be a pub public one since we want everybody to play at the same time. Mm. Like, especially with the uh, Galactic Campaign, uh, the Galactic War that we have in the game, where everybody that plays the game plays together against uh, like a common foe. And this campaign, which is sort of like an MMO-ish kind of gameplay, um, like everybody fights together against uh, this enemy, and you can either win or lose this uh, online conflict. And then a new war starts, which could be or which will be either harder or or less challenging depending on what side you were yeah yeah, yeah if you won or if you lost mm. so it's all like a, a global co-op game so th that's interesting because i think the last time we talked about hell divers the sort of the specifics of the meta game the sort of thing that tied it all together weren't really locked down yeah. so you're looking at that how long would would this kind of conflict last or is it or is it really just down to what players do uh, it's basically down to what the players do. So the way that the campaign works is that uh, you play these missions locally or uh, online with your friends. You're up to four players. And every time you sort of liberate a planet, bring democracy to a planet, mm. uh, that planet is saved and that is, that is pushed to the back end. So, and that pushes the, uh, the border of the war, uh, which means that eventually you'll get closer and closer to the enemy's home planet. And from time to time, like every other day or so, uh, the enemies will attack one of your capital cities and you have to defend it. Mm. So that's sort of the way that the game works. So it's still a yes, four-player co-op, but everybody is contributing to this, uh, to this war effort. Mm. Is, there, is, there, is, is that the only thing, the way to contribute is, is yet through winning battles or, or do you have any, any other mechanics in there? No, no that, that, that is uh, basically the only way. Since we want to keep it really simple for the mm. players so that they understand, they can fully grasp uh, what their effort is doing towards the Galactic Campaign. And one of the problems that we found when we sort of tried to uh, add additional mechanics where you s sort of could kill a number of enemies to boost uh, things or whatever, mm. we found that uh, the problem with having a lot of players uh, striving for the same goal is sort of the same problem as with democracy. People think that their small, tiny portion uh, doesn't yeah, yeah like what uh, does it matter if I complete a planet or mm. what everybody else is completing one? But we've seen that uh, 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 restricting uh, um, like defend events where uh, the enemies attack your home planet uh, um, like cities. Uh, if you restrict th those by time, like you only have two hours to defend this planet, uh, you will uh, be a bigger part of that event. So that's sort of the way that we sort of try to visualize it for the players so that they can get a full understanding of how, how well they're doing and that their effort counts towards the, the overall progress. And, and it's still coming out on PS3, PS4, PS Vita. And how, how's that sort of bringing it out? Are, are you in line with all those different platforms? Uh, we haven't uh, fully decided the release plan yet. If it's going to come out on all platforms simultaneously or if we're going to uh, release one at a later stage or something like that. But, I mean, game development is, is fairly hard. It's fairly difficult to de develop a game. And 
if I had known what I know now, doing it, uh, the undertaking of doing a game for three widely different platforms, like the PS3 is basically ancient by now, the PS4 is the super machine where, which nobody has fully explored yet and nobody knows what it can do. And uh, the PS Vita is a brilliant platform, but it's more like a mobile uh, architecture than, uh, than the PS3 or the PS4. So all of those uh, differences makes it extremely difficult to create a game, which should also be cross-play. So you can play with your friends across all platforms and have no like difference in gameplay. Mm -hmm. So we need to have like the same amount of enemies on all consoles and there's like a, a lot of optimization that needs to, uh, to be in place for uh, getting the game running on the Vita and the PS3 compared to the PS4. And then people expect a certain level of visual quality on the PS4 as well. Mm -hmm. So it means that we have to double up some of the content to make like higher resolution textures and whatnot. Yeah. So, but all in all, uh, from a development standpoint, it's been tough, but I hope that everybody that plays the game will appreciate what we've done with just that. I sort of gather that maybe the PS4 is sort of the lead platform then, if, if is that a correct assessment? You would think so, but actually it's the PS3 that's the lead platform. Mm -hmm. Since if we had done the, based the game on the PS4, it would have been infinitely much harder to scale it down for the PS Vita. Mm -hmm. So we sort of set the PS3 as the baseline. Uh, getting 30 FPS in uh, in uh, in uh, 720p, and like okay, that, that's what we're gonna do for the PS PS4. We go to 60 FPS and go full HD, and the Vita has its own resolution and runs at 30 FPS as well. And the trick is that the uh, gameplay, uh, like the core, uh, well, this is becoming technical, but yeah, the uh, the logics mm -hmm. of the game needs to run at 30 FPS on all platforms. All right. So the rendering is just faster on the PS4. It's still a smooth, ex uh, r infinitely much more smoother experience, but the PS3 is, is sort of like the lead platform. All right. I think I didn't quite get that, but I sort of got it. Yeah. It's it's you're playing at 30 frames per second, but you're seeing something else on the PS4. Exactly. So the game logic is sort of running at 30 frames per second. Sort of what strategy games do. They usually run like 10 frames per second in the game logic, mm. and you still get like a really smooth experience because there's so many calculations that needs to be done, yeah. and which is the uh, expensive part when it comes to like CPU. CPU expensive. Uh, this is super technical. <laughs> so the game is a lot. Of, it's super chaotic and a lot of a lot of fun. It's going to look great on PS4, I think that's what you're saying. Right. Yeah, it, it's, it is, but it's, uh, it's going to be as good on the PS3 and on the Vita. Mm. Uh, and and well, this is also one of those projects that I, I have to ask you a little bit about the journey, because it's, 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 it's a special project for you guys uh, coming to Sony, uh, first time you're working with them. And yeah. wh What's that experience been? It's been great. I mean, uh, getting sign and, and working with these huge partners. We're also partnering with Warner Brothers to make Gauntlet and both of these uh, huge publishers, you would expect them to be more corporate, more like strict and harder because they need they are huge. But actually it's the opposite. They are so relaxed and they're so super chill and the producers that we have on, on, uh, on Sony, they're super friendly and they're more like a part of the team than they are a part of Sony, which gives them a really in-depth knowledge of, of the game. So I was a bit concerned at first, but all of my concern has just been blown away. It surpassed my highest expectations. It's just great. All right. So any any sort of estimate on how, how long it's going to take to iron those last things out and when, when we might see it? Well, it's going to be out this year. That's mm -hmm. what I can say. Um, and we'll see. I mean, we're we're intent on not releasing a buggy product product again. I mean, everybody knows about the Magical launch, and we don't want to repeat that ever again. So that's our primary concern, and and Sony is also concerned about that, or well, not concerned, but they they recognize how important it is to to uh, to not uh, disappoint the gamers that are actually paying for a game. I mean, if you buy like a broken. Uh, uh, furniture at a furniture store. It's not like you're gonna accept that it's missing one leg because the furniture makers didn't have time to build a leg. Maybe they'll come and patch patch that leg yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> patch notes. We added a leg. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you.